How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 48 of Park 2 Primera. Today we have a triple header, but you join me for something a little bit bigger than that. This is the Super Copper. There's 20 minutes left in the Super Copper. We have a penalty in the Super Copper, and Siapina is still looking for his first ever goal at the club. I gave him the start over Mahika, and as he steps up for this penalty, I thought to myself... I can't not commentate the last 20 minutes of the Super Copa final. So here we are. Siapina, please do not make this a monumental waste of time. Score for me. The first action people are seeing of you in a racing shirt. Make it something to remember. He sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And this feels like a really weird way to start an episode. But we are a goal up in the Super Copa final. I'll be honest, it's been a pretty atrocious game. There's not been a lot happening. There were two shots in the entirety of the first half, but we have broken the deadlock there. And, uh, well, maybe it's time to make some subs. You may also notice I've gone a bit more normal than I have been playing, with Siapina playing as a complete forward on his debut. I say on his debut, it's not his debut at all. On, on his live com debut, he's just scored a penalty within the first few minutes. Now we need to see out this game. I'm going to take off Avramides, who, surprise, surprise, he's not performed. We'll bring in Paolo Blow at centre attack in mid, and I kind of just want to hold on to the rest of the subs, I think. I'm now overthinking everything. 15 minutes left. We need to hold on. Let's just lower the tempo, up the time-wasting, slow down this match as much as we can. And, of course, just as a reminder, we have got a triple header today. We're taking on Real Madrid and Barcelona in the league and we do also have uh, a Champions League game against PSG. So th there's lots of football to be played today, um, including this. I guess this is the first ever live com quadruple header. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Also, Pulisic is on the attack. I criticised the fee they paid for him a couple of episodes ago. I hope he's not remembered. Uh, although, with an effort like that, m maybe I was just right. Uh, okay, they're committing men forward. There's another highlight here. Of course, the Super Copper, it would be our first silverware that we win in terms of major. It is also the League Cup kind of equivalent, where it's the, the lesser of the domestic trophies and it's played in Saudi Arabia every year. Um, I still don't know what to make of that. The board don't care about it, but if we win it here, I will act like I always cared about it. Pablo, Capanu. Holding up the ball nicely, although not with a pass like that. Galaretta has to chase down Lukaku, who's clean for on goal, squares it to Ossiem. But oh my word, Velez, what a tackle that was. That was nuts. And now there's just two minutes left. And we've, we've won a trophy. I mean, that's not what I thought I was coming back for today. I thought we wouldn't cover the Super Copper just because we're probably going to get beaten by Real Madrid or Barcelona. But via a penalty, with one of the only shots we've had all game... We're going to lift some silverware and we'll take it. We'll take it. Enjoy it, lads. Savour it. Hoist that trophy aloft. Yeah, but this is the weirdest start to an episode ever and I don't quite know what to make of it. So after that initial burst of excitement, it's it's only 10 days since the last episode. Um, I've got quite a lot of football managers still to play before the triple header we've got coming up. Um, so I'll be back in a month. Hopefully we've had a very good month. We are also in the Copa del Rey. If we go far in it, great. If we don't, it's not going to be the end of the world. We're still targeting a top four finish. We've won both games in the Super Copa 1-0. Triple header incoming. Should we roll the intro now? Yeah, let's do it now. Why not? Hello everyone, this feels weird, but we're back and we are going to be continuing on with things today with a triple header. Yes, you've just seen the Copper, or rather the Super Copper final. We won it 1-0 against Real Madrid. That was a good result, albeit slightly anticlimactic. The penalty, the difference maker, but it's silverware. And whilst it's not silverware that our kind of staff care about, uh, we, we've won something. Get it in the trophy cabinet. And well, the good news is for us, there is still plenty more opportunities for trophies this year, because since you were last year, we played a whole host of games in the Copa del Rey, as well as some games in the league. Now, today, of course, we are going to be taking on Real Madrid, PSG and Barcelona. We are going to quick fire through the fixtures since you were last here. And well, the first game we had after last episode was against Granada. It finished nil-nil. I don't know how it finished nil-nil. I'm not entirely sure why I've decided to come to the profile of this game. Nothing happened. 
But following on from that game, we played two games in the Super Copper. We got past Athletic Bilbao uh, 1-0, and then we did the same with Real Madrid. And following on from that, we extended our really good defensive run with a whole host of clean sheets, a couple of games where we conceded one, but the goals returned everyone. It was like we needed a winter holiday for the players to rejuvenate themselves. Uh, we took on Alaves and beat them 4-0 in the Liga. We followed that up with a game against Real Union. Uh, we won that one 5-1. As you can see here, Aguilera getting his first ever goal for the senior team. This was a nice, proud moment to see. Unfortunately, he did get injured, um, so he hasn't played much since then. But nevertheless, I used the Copa del Rey as an opportunity to rotate things around, not just in that game, but in some of the games that came up uh, in La Liga. We scored three goals against both Sociedad and Vallecano as we cruised some to some good wins. We then took on Rayo... Ma Maja de Honda. That's not right, is it? Um, look, they play in the third tier. We beat them 1-0. It was a very rotated team. Um, really rotated. To the point where Zakuani got his first ever senior goal for the club. Uh, Zakuani, you may remember, we picked him up from Dortmund, I think, last year for £85,000. He's gone out on loan for the second half this season. But he scored his first ever goal for the club in this game. Albeit against a really lower league team in a game that we probably should have won more convincingly. And well, four more games to go through real quick, two of which were against Levante. Uh, we beat them 3-1 in the league. Velez with a brace. Yes, the centre-back getting on the score sheet twice for his first two goals of the season. And well, following on from that, less than a week later, we took on Levante again. This time in the Copa del Rey fifth round. And uh, well, we got through on penalties. They missed three out of four penalties from the shootout. Gave me a little bit of a familiar feeling back to when we were doing Park to Prem this year and we couldn't win penalty shootouts. But Ramadani was a little superhero in this game. He got an 8.1 rating. He's been absolutely superb. Um, really, really has been. The first goalkeeper in a little while, I feel like in a save that I've done, where I look at him and go, you really have made a difference for us. And well, after that result that was decided by penalties, another draw that couldn't be decided against Sevilla. Again, nil-nil. Uh, we created more than Sevilla did, just really couldn't get going. As you can tell by the starting lineup, however, quite a bit of rotation involved. And that rotation was because in the Copa del Rey semi-final first leg, um, we had to take on Atletico Madrid. Now, we've lost 1-0. It's not a great result. I did consider doing it for the episode, but given the fact we are technically now doing three live matches and the Super Copper game, I couldn't find a way to squeeze it in. We lost 1-0, but there is a second leg on the horizon. We will go to that game against Atletico Madrid uh, in the Copa del Rey semi-final, looking to turn around the 1-0 deficit at home, and that will feed us nicely into the second leg against PSG. Now, we did have the January transfer window. Did I sell Avramides? Did I sign anyone? No, no. No, nothing happened. I didn't sign anyone. A couple of players went out on loan, um, but there were no sales to speak of. It was quite quiet in the end. We didn't have a whole lot of money to spend. And rather than just, you know, have the money burn a hole in my pocket and spend money for the sake of it, we've kind of just squirreled it away. Uh, and I think that is the right move to make. I think Avramides, he can be good. And he has stepped up things a little bit lately. You can see here in his last five games, uh, two goals, two assists. It's not that bad. Um, hopefully he's going to be able to step up today. So the first of today's matches is going to be against Real Madrid. And we have had a nice little running form, unfortunately, as have the teams ahead of us. Atletico and Barcelona have played really well. Uh, last year, they would have slipped up during this run of games that we've played. That wasn't the case here. However, we have pulled a little bit away from Valencia. And while we're 13 games left of the season, we're currently 11 points ahead of them. So uh, we're starting to build up a gap. The goal difference looks really good. I don't want to speak too prematurely, but barring an absolute disaster, we should be able to get top four in Champions League football next year. However, we are going to be tested today because we are going to be taking on Barcelona and Real Madrid away in the league, and in between that sandwich, uh, we've got PSG. Doesn't get much more difficult than this. So I have tweaked things a little bit tactically over the last month or so, um, mostly to try and get more out of our players. Generally speaking, it's been a really positive experience. We've played really, really well. Um, this is what I've settled on at the moment. You'll notice that Pablo Torre is on the bench. Uh, normally, Martinez would start for us out right on the right with Ciapina then playing down the middle. Uh, however, Mejica... He's still in really, really good goal-scoring form. He's got a hat-trick recently, and, uh, well, with the injuries. Siapina's going to play a little bit of an unlikely role as a right-winger. It's not really a role I want to play him in all that often, but he's really 
quite good at the role despite his lack of crossing. Um, so a little bit of a shuffle there. Calderon has wrestled away Pablo Torre's reign, I feel like, as our centre attack in mid. Is that unfair? Is that mad? I don't think it is at this point. He's 18 years old. He's had some exponential development this year. He's just on his development curve. We're looking at a cliff face right now. I want to help him get to being the best player he can be at 18 years old. He's going to start for us today. He scored as well against Athletic Bilbao in the Supercopa semi-final. Avramides is out on the left. And while the rest of the defence kind of looks as you would expect... It's worth noting Velez has now been at the club two years. We're currently awaiting paperwork. Had that paperwork been done before the end of the transfer window and he had acquired Spanish nationality, I would have recalled Corridor, who is having a reasonably successful loan spell at Real Madrid. Um, and what it does mean is that when this man comes back for us at the start of next season, it's going to feel like a new signing at right back. But well, of course, Corridor is unable to play against us today, and maybe that can play into our favour. I don't think it will. It's going to be a tough run of games, these next three, all played within, I think, eight days of one another. Uh, the squad has had to have some rotation. Don't be, I guess, distracted by the Copa del Rey run. I have played a full-strength team, um infrequently in that competition I have used it as a chance to rotate things around um it is pretty brutal this season players wanted a rest going into this I gave them a rest I assume after this game they're going to want another one uh, the injuries did pile up over the last month I think we had nine injuries in January um non long term fingers crossed touch wood that's going to remain the case let's see if we can get a result today Halfway through this first half already, and the time continues to trickle away. It's been a cagey affair. They've had two shots on target to our zero. We are edging out possession, however, and away from home. Even if we could just hold on for a draw, that would be a really good performance against a Real Madrid team who currently sit comfortably top of the league. You can see here, we had a few chances early on, but from there, they grew into the game a little bit more. That said, I am going to tell the players I'm happy. I am going to tell them, however, I want more from them, but... I mean, it's not an entertaining fixture thus far from, a, uh, I guess, a video perspective. But as far as I'm concerned, to beat them for a second time in an episode would be quite good. This does feel a little bit like the Supercopper game, a game where two teams are cancelling each other out. And, well, I should not talk any further because there is a highlight here. And it's Valverde through the middle and that shot has gone just the wrong side of the post. That was concerning. That was not far wide. Only half an hour left in this game already. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to move Siapina down the middle and I'm going to bring in Hardy to play out on the right-hand side. I think... No, I'm not. I'm going to play Avramides on the right and Hardy on the left. Um, Hardy just seems to play better out on the left, even though he's left-footed. As an inside forward, it feels counterintuitive, but it works for him. I'm not going to question it. Elsewhere in the team, Avramides has been a bit meh, but to be honest, the squad depth in the wide area due to the Martinez injury isn't all that great. Uh, I'm going to take off Blanco and I'm going to bring in Vega, I think, just to get some fresh legs into this midfield. Uh, in this second half, Real Madrid have really come back into the game and started to get more of the ball, which concerns me. But there's 15 minutes left and it's still only 0-0. Okay, okay, okay. There is a highlight here. Grimaldo to Conceição. Out in the wide area, knocks it around Mark, plays it into Lukaku. Who did that block? Velez, you big, big boy. I can't believe I uttered and even suggested that I might sell him last episode. No no bids came in for him, by the way. And, and neither did they for Avramides. After that offer from China of 40 million, the, the, the interest dried up. No one put in any bids. I guess with January, there's just less money going around. Um, what it does mean is we're at full strength, and while we might need to be at full strength again here as... Quick short free kick is taken. Calderon flicks it on. See a peanut. I mean, we could catch them on the break here. Real Madrid would have fancied themselves to get the win here. They have committed men forward. The ball is switched to Avramides, who hits it first time. It hits the woodwork. And that was a chance. I don't know if he needed to shoot first time. I think he could have taken his time there. And now Conceição has a corner for them. And, well, that is cruel, isn't it? Dejan Kulazewski, the Swedish international, with a glancing header into the top corner, and in a game where I feel like we've done quite well. We've looked resilient throughout. Unfortunately, a corner is going to go in. Who was that on the post? Zivkovic. Zivkovic, why didn't you jump, man? And that's a gut punch. I don't think there's any point in going too much more attacking here. Real Madrid scoring so late on, leaving us with no way back into this game. It was a 
Good defensive performance until that very last minute. That Avramides chance might be one we look to regret. I told the players, defend it. well, the defenders, I was happy. They hate me. I'm not going to say anything more. I'm running out of the changing room. And now Mahika's out for two to three weeks. That's not good. That is not good. I mean, there's fitness concerns as well. How many players want a rest? I'm already resting some players, but you can see it. All the players of orange rest need, need a rest. We play PSG in four days. I've just lost my top goal scorer for the first leg. Today's episode was already going to be hard. I feel like we've got a mountain to climb now. Okay, so this is big. PSG, first leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League. Last year, we didn't make it beyond this point. I'll be honest, given the team we've been drawn against, compared to when we got knocked out against Porto, I'm slightly less optimistic today. And against Porto, I was optimistic and we lost. So, yeah, the expectation is going down a peg. So in terms of the team for today's game, rotation needed, unfortunately. Uh, of course, Mihik is injured. Vega has gone and got himself a virus. So I've sent him home and then that's happened. And then Kapanu has gone and got, what did he get? He got a cold. Different virus. I guess it's flu season in Spain in February. As a result, Kapanu is only on the bench and isn't really fit enough to play the full game. Awusu, who is of course our other defensive midfielder, he's had an atrocious start to his time at the club. He had a lower back stress fracture, then to start New Year, he was partying too hard and he broke his ribs. He was then out for six weeks, so he's missed the best part of three months this year, which is pretty gutting for one of the biggest earners at the club, and as a result, of all these injuries his physicals have really taken a tumble so that's pretty disappointing but today he starts he's coming back from that long-term injury i've been told he can only play half a game so i think the plan is to swap him and capanu around at the break miguel salgado would probably be the other option to play at defensive mid or maybe even basia um but basia himself is not really a hundred percent i mean i could play basia should I play Basia? I'm no, I'm not going to play Basia. I will have him on the bench, though, I think. He's not... I'll, I'll be honest. Awusu and Kapani with the defensive midfielders. I don't really have a third. I didn't think I'd need a third. Um, we'll give Awusu the trust. Um, worth noting as well, Martinez is going to be starting at right back today. Had a little bit of an injury setback, but he's still developing really, really nicely. Uh, that means that uh, Siapina is going to start as our striker, which is where I want him to be playing colder on in behind Avramides on the left. The defence remains the same. Fitness is not too much of a concern for a lot of the squad. Uh, worth noting, Martinez is also not going to be able to play the whole game probably. Um, I expect Hardy to get some minutes ready as the only one of our wide players who's not currently carrying an injury and I feel confident can come on off the bench to actually play if I need him to. I feel like the chips today are very much stacked against us but we're at home for this game so let's go into it with a little bit of optimism even if we are missing our top goal scorer and our best defence in mid. In terms of their team, you can see it here. They're going to be playing Mbappe on the wing. They've got Teo Hernandez and Kimpembe at the back. And a whole lot of other really good players, including Ward Prowse still playing right back. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, anyway, we've got a chance. It's a Zivkovic throw in, which they are going to deal with. Awusu crunching tackle, desperately hoping he's not going to get any further injuries today. Probably only going to be able to play half the match, the defensive midfielder. But getting stuck in early is what we want to see. And now Siapina to Martinez. He's threaded through. His shot is saved. And that might have been the opportunity of the game, and it came to us so early. Oh, we might have another, though. Blanco, Avramides takes it down. Of course, being at home here, I think we have to win this leg to stand any chance of going through. And, I mean, it's highlight after highlight to start things off here. Am I wrong to start feeling maybe a tad optimistic? Maybe I am, because they are in possession. Although, Awusu, crunching tackle yet again. Unfortunately, it falls to that man, Kylian Mbappe, who I hear is quite good at football. Teo Hernandez at left back now. Options in the middle. Should I be worried? I think I should be. Suarez, effort blocked. Worth noting, that's not Luis Suarez. It's a different Suarez. Which, which Suarez is it? It is. I mean, okay. It is Luis Suarez. It's not the Luis Suarez. You think it is? Oh, you couldn't make this up, could you? Well, Prowse free kick. I feel like I should be scared. I should be. His set pieces are very good, aren't they, Ward Prowse? 16 minutes gone. A whole lot of highlights later. We have a breakthrough. It's not the one I wanted to see. Ward Prowse with the delivery and Kimpembe rises highest and heads it goalwards. 1-0 PSG. 
Ward Prowse at right back, I just can't get over. I can't get behind it. It's just deeply upsetting to me. Hoping Avramides can really show him who's boss today as, well, we won the ball in a really advantageous position and then immediately gave it away there. PSG look very determined to play out from the back, which is going to suck us up the pitch. It may also open up opportunities, though, for us to force turnovers of possession high up the pitch. That's what I'm going to hope for. It's not what we're going to see here as Teo is bringing it forward. Oh my word, that is a crunching tackle that makes absolutely no contact. Asensio has then an effort that's blocked away. And we get it away from danger. Mbappe, my friends, has gone off. We have injured Kylian Mbappe. I will now hope that he's out for the second leg. Is that immoral? Debatably, possibly. I don't give a Scooby-Doo. We maybe have a bit more of a chance if he's out for the second leg. I feel like now we really have to capitalise in the second half here, where we've had our fair share of the play. We just can't find a breakthrough, but maybe that's about to change. Or maybe Zivkovic is just going to give the ball away immediately. Zivkovic, what can you do here? Gives it to Owusu, who I probably should be taking off the pitch. Avramides has picked up a knock and Martinez is injured. There's a tackle by Marquinhos. Is a penalty about to be given? I mean, surely it is. From that situation, it has to be. And with Mojica not on the pitch, it's going to be Siapina, if indeed it is given, who is going to take it for us. A chance to draw a level against PSG. The young Argentinian forward steps up. He hits it. No nonsense there. Into the bottom corner. It is hammered home. His fourth goal of the season. Of course, he only came back to the club in January. But his first couple of months here, they've been fruitful They've been productive. He's already scored in one cup final. He scored another big penalty in a big moment here to make it 1-1. I feel like I've pushed my luck here. Awusu, I was told, shouldn't play anymore. So we're going to bring in Kapanu. Elsewhere, Avramides has got this thigh injury, which I don't really like the sound of. Um, the issue is my rotation options are limited. I think what we'll do is when we've Calderon out wide, bring Pablo Torre in the middle and then take off Martinez for Hardy. I think that's the only way I can really shuffle things around in the final third. The injuries we've got have kind of added up a little bit. There's definitely an argument to say the wide attacking areas are a little bare bones for us anyway. But yeah, these injuries, these fitness concerns, they are not really helping matters. And I do not like using all three subs with 25 minutes left. Although if we score with one of our subs getting involved, maybe it'll be a stroke of genius. Kapanu brings it forward back to Mark. Dinked in. Teo takes it down for a second. I thought maybe it'd be given as a handball, but... It's not going to be, but we might come at them again. Hardy, signed for us many, many moons ago now, back when we were in the third tier. And maybe he should have been left in the third tier. That was awful. <laughs> in this second half, we really have stepped things up. The XG has swung in our favour. There is part of me that wants to go more attacking, but I'm fearful of PSG getting a second away goal. And we look pretty competent right now, dare I say. And while Zivkovic has got space to make us look more than competent, can he make us look dangerous? Not on this occasion. He smashes it into the side netting. And with 10 minutes left, do I, do I want to go more attacking? I don't, think I, I don't think I can afford to. I need to hope that we can just get a goal here. Pablo also has a knock. Hardy's there. I take it back, Hardy. I'm sorry, mate. I didn't mean it. Maybe he didn't hear me when I talked crap about him earlier. He scored in a Champions League knockout game. And it's Pablo with the assist. I said earlier, if the two subs link up, I'll look like a genius. I'll tell you what, call me Albert Einstein. First time finish by Hardy, into the bottom corner, makes it 2-1. Some people might be going, Jack, shut up shop, go defensive, not today. I want us to try and keep going here whilst we can, although maybe it's going to fizzle out into nothing. Maybe I'm going to live to regret it. Ward Prowse, he's already assisted one. He goes for another, but Ramadani collects. Now, Ramadani does have the trait, uses long throws to spring counter-attacks. On this occasion, he's going to kick it long to Pablo. Options inside. If we could get a third here, it would be monumental. Although Pablo, I mean, he's going, gone down in a heap. He already had a knock. That doesn't bode particularly well. Now, PSG looking to bring the ball forward, taking advantage of the fact we've got a man injured on the floor. Despicable behaviour. And uh, Pablo Torre, <laughs> he wants to come off. He wants to come off. He's had enough. I think that's going to be all she wrote for this game. Maybe now I should just time waste, given the fact we're going to be down a man for the last two minutes. But if things stay as they are, and it looks like they are going to, that's a pretty huge result. A 2-1 win, considering how many big players were missing, is good. That was brilliant. That was special.
Well done, lads. It gives us hope going into next episode. We can do a little bit more. Now, the, the real question is, how bad are these injuries? Calderon is out for one to three days. Avramides is out for seven to 12 days. Pablo Torres out with a gash leg as well. I mean, what have they got on their studs? The PSG players, they got like razor blades attached. The rest and injury situation is kind of bad, isn't it? We've got Barcelona in three days. The injuries, I'll just show you the injury history here. I mentioned having nine injuries in January. Turns out I can't count and it was 10. We've already had eight injuries in February. It was all very good at the start of the season. We are running out of strikers and attacking mids. I got Barcelona in three days. Right, I'm going to go and prepare for that. There may be some, some shuffling needed. Wish me luck. Good luck to our physios as well. I'll be back in a mo. I'll level with you. I didn't quite realise how much trouble we're in when it comes to injuries at the moment. I've got players like Martinez who are only meant to play 60 minutes. I mean, if I want to not start him, I could play Aguilera, um, potentially on the right wing, or I could play Puado, who... I, I probably should use Puado more, but he's just quite basic. Do you, does that make sense? He's quite a basic striker in Football Manager. He's very much the the kind of 13s and 12s in everything you need for an advanced forward, and that's kind of what he's good at. I don't really love using him. I mean, last year he was atrocious for us, which is probably why I've not used him more this year. But given the current situation, he's the man on the bench you may well get brought on. You can see the defence here all need a rest. I can't really give them a rest. I don't want to compromise my starting 11 for today's game because... We're taking on a Barcelona team who, if we lose to, I think we have to just accept we're not going to get second place again this year. If we could beat them, however, we close the gap to six points. We will have already played some of the more difficult games like Real Madrid. Maybe we can catch them. So yeah, the list of injuries is kind of bad. And it's the fact that it's five injuries to first team players, all who play centre attacking mid or in the wide attacking mid areas, or in Mojica's case, I suppose, up front. It's just very unfortunate. It's a bit of a makeshift team. Awusu, I think, is going to start today. I could probably bring back in Kapanu, but there's a bit of a fitness concern. I am now wondering if I should rotate Blanco. The issue is Blanco's rotating option is Vega, who's also out injured. I think this is the team I'm going with. I mean, this Barcelona team's pretty good. They've got Jack Grealish with Mariba in midfield, David Neres and Martial up front. It's not your typical Barcelona team. It is a very good team, however. Generally speaking, I feel like I've got pretty lucky with injuries this year in Football Manager, and I've not had too many. Over the course of the last two seasons at Racing, I feel like my luck has just got... It, we, all the good luck is gone. I've spent it all. Now the injuries are just coming thick and fast. Or maybe I'm just unfortunate. I've tried to rotate things as much as I can. It's weird, actually. The defenders have been the players who I've been told are in need of a rest the most. Um, I guess the midfielders aren't getting to that stage because they get injured before they need a rest. But well, maybe we can cause an upset here as Hardy against his former club dances his way through. I mean, after his get goal in the previous game, who am I to judge him when he brings the ball forward? Also, you may have noticed Atakovic is in at centre attack in mid. You might have forgotten that Atakovic is around. He is still here. I feel like Calderon has just gobbled up his position. And well, Hardy might be gobbling up Avramides' position at the moment because he's just scored again against his former club. Away from home against Barcelona, we take the lead. And Siapina are also involved in the build-up play, which is really nice to see. Atakovic, Blanco, Siapina, ball through to Hardy. Had a lot to do there, but managed to squeeze out a shot. Finds the bottom corner. We take the lead, my friends. I've got to say, it's been a very, very even first half. They've created a fair few chances. And, well, there's a highlight starting deep in our half, which always brings some dread. Although, with a turnover in possession, maybe we can get in behind. Siapina gives it to Hardy. So much to do ahead of him, but he's all on his lonesome, and he doesn't need anyone else. It's the same two linking up for the assist and the goal. I mean, have I just been sleeping on Hardy? I don't think he's that good. But he just seems to do well in the match engine. It's like Mahika. Does anyone else have players like this? Well, it, do, it just doesn't make sense how well he's doing. Like, it defies science. It defies reason. I don't understand. I don't care that I don't understand. It's 2-0. 
I know it's mid-game, but I just feel like we should have a look at his profile, just to remind you of who Hardy is. Two-star current ability, loves big matches, super consistent. Uh, hadn't scored in the league before the game that we're currently in the progress of playing. Um, compared to last year, he's been a bit meh. Uh, not bad for a player we signed for £36,000 from Barcelona, of all teams. And, uh, well, speaking of the devil, here he is over a corner that is headed away off the line by Martial. I think he's, he's come for blood. He's come for revenge. And Barcelona should be scared. Ramadani looking to build from the back to Galaretta. I feel like our defence really has taken shape this year. Obviously, still a bit of a concern at right back with Mark being on loan from United. But we've got Corridor coming back, who's been Real Madrid starting right back for a lot of this season. So I feel like in a weird way that position's sorted as well. And well, maybe Mark's not up to the task. I think he actually made a tackle there. I don't know how he got back goal side of his man. That was a great chance for Barcelona. Let off the hook a little. So out of the break, we are 2-0 up, and I'm not entirely sure how. We scored with our last two shots of the half. Uh, Barcelona have had slightly more chances and slightly better quality of chances in terms of total XG. Um, we've crafted out perhaps the better of the opportunities, and we've taken them. I think there's still a fair bit to happen in this game before the final whistle goes, though. 20 minutes left here. I need to make changes, don't I? Players are getting tired. See, Apina's now got a knock. Please don't be anything serious. I've called Puado very average, right? You're, you are the, the standard adv advance forward. You're going to play there for us elsewhere. Aguilera is going to have to come in at right mid. Of course, he came through the academy a couple of years ago. We're showing some good signs of development. I've tried to give him a little bit of first-team football this year. Going to get the nod on this occasion. Blanco is tired as well. I'm going to bring in a Wusu. I move him up the field to a box-to-box -box midfielder role. We're going to take off Blanco, try and get some fresh legs in. Just hold on, lads. We've got two goals. Surely this is ours and it's all done. Barcelona for this last five minutes have got a lot more attacking. They still have Messi playing for them at 38. I kind of find it mad that he's not retired yet. Can I sign him? I mean, I couldn't, could I? I could challenge for the title. I can't really guarantee that. What does he want a week? We'll come back to him in the summer. <laughs> Don't know why I'm doing that at the end of this game, but we've won 2-0. Maybe he will lower his demands after this result. Hardy's just grabbed two against his former club, and in a game that I thought we were going to struggle in, and in an episode which probably should have been the episode of death, really, we have no right to beat PSG and Barcelona with our current squad situation, so much so that the media don't know how to react here. I am a little bit concerned here that the game is just stuck on awaiting media reaction. I'm hoping that Messi and offering him a contract hasn't broken the game. Um, the game's been stuck like this for like two minutes, and I don't know what to do. I mean, just a word of advice. Don't try and sign Messi during a match. Not that you're going to do that if you're a normal human being, but if you're like me, be aware. So I gave it another five minutes, and... It's not doing anything, everyone. I don't know what to do here. I think the best course of action here is just to replay that game until I get the same result and similar results for the teams around us. I know it's not ideal. Sometimes bugs happen in Football Manager and there isn't really a good way to solve things. But you can bet your bottom dollar, I'm not throwing away the result that I just saw our team put in there because it was sensational. Yeah, weird ending. Gonna end things here. We may never know what the media thought of this 2 0 win. Hopefully, they like whatever result we end up getting. Uh, I appreciate the support as always. If you've got any words of wisdom or want to tell me how you would deal with this situation, leave it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this triple header. Thank you to Editing Jack for the work that's gone into it. And uh, well, until next time, from me and maybe the media reaction if it ever happens, uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>